Hello, we welcome you to today's Bible study session. Today we begin a new series on the life of David. How uh, in the last Bible study up to the last one we concluded our study of the family of Jacob. Today we are going to look at why God what are the things, what is special about David that made God select him to be the second king of Israel? Uh, there is a lot in the life of this man from his very young age to when he became old and as established king of Israel. We'll try to learn as much as we can, but we'll learn a lot. Because when God selected David, he identified David as somebody that has the right kind of heart. We will be learning about this in the series. Today's Bible study is really a, uh, an interesting introduction to the series because we will learn about two contrasting interactions uh, with God. The first one is that the first king of Israel, Saul, lost favor with God. We'll find out what he did that made him lose favor. In fact, God told Samuel that Saul had turned away from him. So what exactly did Saul do? This will give us an idea of the kind of behavior that God expects from us and expects from us in our interaction with him and in our interaction that people that he places in our life especially senior people that are in position of authority over us that he places in our life to represent him to be his provider assistant to provide things for us so why did he why did Saul lose favor with God then the other contrast at the other end, we will learn about somebody that God selected because he looked at him and said, yes, he has the right kind of heart. He said that men, you know, people, that when we look at, when we evaluate our fellow human beings, we tend to look at outward appearance, but that he, God, looks at the heart which means that he had looked at the heart of David and selected him to be second king of Israel. The first uh, question we will be able to answer in this Bible study, what did Saul do wrong? But the second one, what are the good qualities of David? What are the qualities, what are the characteristics that made God select him as somebody that has the right kind of heart? That is going to take several Bible study sessions because we will have to look at the entire life of David in order to understand why God selected him. Everything we will learn is from First Samuel, that is everything we will learn today in today's Bible study session is from First Samuel chapter 15 and 16. Well, let us begin with uh, God giving an instruction to Saul to destroy the Amalekites. God said, he sent Samuel to Saul and said, look, he wants to punish the Amalekites because they were led Israel when Israel was coming back from Egypt. That because of this, that he wants Saul to go in with the Israeli army and destroy, totally destroy, kill everybody, kill every farm animal, every livestock. Well, Saul assembled his army, attacked the Amalekites, and killed several of them and several of the animals. But he took their king, Agag, alive. Then he took the best livestock alive. He destroyed some of the weaker and not so like. Essentially, among the livestock, he destroyed what he didn't like and took alive what he liked. Let us read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. It 
Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter, chapter 15. Chapter 15. Yeah. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they, way, when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and destroy, ev and destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Telem, Telem. 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, Go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havila to Shur, to the east of Egypt. He took Agai, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag, and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. They were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they were totally destroyed. Well, so that's how Saul carried out the instruction that gave, gave him, uh, that God gave to him. Uh, we need to un uh, understand this clearly. God said, go and do this. And this is how I want you. I want you to destroy everything. But Saul went without consulting with God, without... He just took it upon himself to change that instruction. He thought, he believed, he obeyed God, but he took, the, he took liberty to change what God had asked him to do. He did it according to his own desires, instead of according to the instruction that God had given to him. Well, as soon as God realized this, he sent Samuel. He said, you go talk to Saul, because Saul has turned away from me. Samuel went, we will read this in the Bible, it's very interesting, because when he got there, he was told that Saul had gone to set up a statue for himself. So Samuel went there to look for him. Then when he, when as soon as he saw, as soon as Saul saw Samuel, he began to boast, to say, hey, you know, we did what God sent us to do. Then Samuel asked him, then why do I hear the cry of animals? You know, the cry of uh, sheep and goat and cattle. Where is this coming from? Then Saul, his first justification was, oh, uh, the soldiers brought the animals and selected the best to sacrifice to the Lord. So see now, he is, he was the commander. And now he's blamed, he's saying it was the soldiers. The soldiers, uh, you know, they brought these animals and they have selected the best. To sacrifice to the Lord. So that should make God happy. Then he said, Look, we totally destroyed the rest. We destroyed everything, so why are you bothering me? You know? Um, after all, I went on the mission that God sent me. Remember, He told me to go and destroy the Amalekites, and that's what I did. Then, when Samuel probed him the more, he said he was afraid of the people. So he did what he believed they wanted, saying that obeying, the uh, obeying what he felt his people wanted was more important than obeying God. Let us read about this. It, it's difficult to, to recount the whole thing. Uh, first of all, we we'll read First Samuel 15, verses 10 to 11, then 13 to 21, and 24 to 25 to see Saul's attempt to justify his actions to Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15 
Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord, your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Stop, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And he sent you on a mission, saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make war on them until they have, until we have wiped them out. What did you, why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, said Saul. I went out on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle for the plunder. And he sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy the oh, Yeah, go back to 21. 21. Yeah, the soldiers. Yeah. Uh, the soldiers took sheep and cattle for the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God, at Gilgad. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people, and so I gave it to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Well, so this is Saul said, oh, I have sinned. But he, he didn't really uh, confess, you know, accept responsibility for what he did. Rather he blend, he said, oh, it was the people that made me. He is like a little child, you know. So the child does something, so you know the other child made me do it. You know, he he was supposed to accept the responsibility. So what really happened here? The Lord told Samuel that Saul had turned away from him. What did Saul do that led to that? The first one was arrogance. Saul became arrogant. He was, he was more interested in setting himself up to be honored by the people. In setting himself, God, God appointed him king essentially to lead the people to organize them in worshiping him, in doing what he wants them to do. But and he has done that up to this point, he has done some of that, but now he is becoming somebody that sort of thinks that the people, you know, he is the Lord over the people and they should honor him that, uh, like when you, after they came back from this uh, battle with the Amalekites, or this uh, war against the Amalekites, the first thing he did was to set up a statue for himself. So that in the morning when Saul, when Samuel came to look for Saul, Saul wasn't really there because he had gone to the place that they were building a statue for him and in his honor. So this, this arrogance was one of the things that God did not tolerate about Saul. But the, the, the greatest manifestation of the arrogance was that God sent him on a mission and he changed, he changed the mission, he, he made it his own mission. This, God has sent you to do something, it is not about you. It is about God, you have to remember, you have to remember who sent you and what you were sent to do. It doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah, Saul was a very tall person and a, a brave soldier and all that, but it was not about him. It was about God, and he forgot that. Instead of destroying things the way that he had been appointed to destroy, he, he took the best for himself and said he was going to sacrifice to God, 
and then destroy the bad ones. God didn't say go and destroy the bad ones and take the best. Now, he was also focused on impressing people. Look at the example, look at the excuses he was trying to give to Samuel. He said, oh, um, you know, I was afraid of the people, so I did this because of them. Then we, we didn't read this, but actually when, at some point when he realized that Samuel was not going to change his mind because Samuel was simply a messenger. He was only, simply came to tell Saul that he has lost favor from God. When he realized that he, he could not convince Samuel to change his mind, he told Samuel to stay, to at least try to honor him in the eyes of his people, in the eyes of his elders. So his own honor was what was important to him. And these, these things that indicate arrogance, indicate somebody forgetting that that what he is doing was not for him, it was from, for God. It was for the person that sent him, his master that sent him. He forgot that. And that is the basic reason that God decided that Saul was the wrong person to continue to be king over Israel. He told Samuel that he was grieved that he made Saul king of Israel. Now, this is important in relationship with people. You know, you, it, you are your teacher, your father, you, are, you know, people that God has placed in position of authority over you. When they give you something to do, when they assign you a task, a task try to remember it. Remember the limitations that they have given you. Yes, as human beings, at times we may make changes, but you talk to it. Make sure you have the approval of the person that you represent. It's like the ambassador to a country forgetting that he is not the president of his own country. Yes, he's an ambassador. He has authority to do a lot of things, but he must always remember that he represents a country. The same way you represent God, you represent an authority. Always remember what it is you represent and how to carry out the, your duties as a representative of, of God that you represent, a representative of the country that you represent. Saul was arrogant and God instructed Samuel to begin to take away the kingship from Saul. So after Saul has made his attempt to convince Samuel, Samuel rebuked him. And let us read about this rebuke from in 1 Samuel 22, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 to 23. Before then, Samuel simply told uh, Saul and said, Look, it is more important to obey God than to make sacrifices to God. You know, you, are going, you, you said you are going to sacrifice the best animals to him and all that, but all that God wanted was for you to obey him. He says to obey is better than to sacrifice. Then he says arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. So telling Saul that what he had done was very bad and because of what he did, that he rejected the word of God, he forgot the instructions of God, so God has rejected him as king over Israel. Let us read it from the word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 15 But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey, to obey is, to be, is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like a sin of divination and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as a king. Because you have rejected the word of God, 
he has rejected you as king. And that was the conclusion. So, the next part of the story is, then God is now, God has just told us the bad things. This person did something bad, and because he did these things, because he disobeyed me, I've rejected him from being king over Israel. Now we are going to the next one, where God identifies somebody that he has selected. And the contrast between these, these two actions, in one case it is somebody that disobeyed him, in one case it was somebody that he identified as having the right heart, a man after his own heart. Uh, we are not going to know everything about David. We are not going to learn everything about David in this single Bible study session. But we are starting a new series in which we will learn why God selected David. What are the things he found in David that he liked so much. So let us begin with God giving instruction to Samuel. He said, go to Jesse. A man of, uh, I think it's better him, that one of his children, one of his sons, has been selected. That he, God, has selected one of the sons of Jesse to become king of Israel. Then Samuel said, Look, you know, Saul is still king. Um, if, if, if he knows I'm going to do this, he may just kill me and kill Jesse and all his children. So, how do I do this? Then God said, pretend that you are going there to make a sacrifice. You take things with you for making sacrifice. And when you get there, invite Jesse and his family to the sacrifice. Here we see something important. Yes, God could have protected somewhere from Saul, anywhere he wants. But in our interaction with people, God wants things to be natural. He wants things to be to be done in a natural way. So Saul, I mean Samuel was afraid of Saul. And instead of saying, okay, go there, I'll send the angels to surround you. He said, okay, go under the cover, pretend you're going there to make a sacrifice. So take the things, you know, the way they did sacrifice those that they take animals, kill them, you know perform some things they need to perform and people will be invited to the sacrifice. So he said, invite Jesse and his family. Let us read about this. First Samuel 16, verses 1 to 5. First Samuel chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as a king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a, a heifer with you and, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. In, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So God indicated to Samuel that he has selected a son of Jesse to be king over Israel. And this son of Jesse is David, and we are going to see how David was selected. Because when Samuel uh, invited Jesse and his sons to the, to the sacrifice, the first son of Jesse came. And he's a very tall man, very handsome person. And as soon as Samuel saw him, he believed that this was the person that God had selected to be king. And then God told him and said, that man, that man looks at the outward appearance, 
but God looks at the heart. That the person you are looking at is not the person that I have sent you to anoint. The person that I have sent you to anoint is coming behind. Let us read about this in the Word of God. 1 Samuel 16, verses 6 to 13. 1 Samuel chapter 16. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before, the, here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things man, a man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pa pass in front of Samuel. But so Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then said to Shema, Pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. Then he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep, Samuel said. Send for him, we will not sit down until he arrives. Then he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy, with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. Yes, said, don't look at his appearance. Don't forget that he is very tall. Forget that he is uh, a very handsome person because I have not chosen him. So people look at the outward appearance, but, the God, but God looks at the heart. The implication of this is that God looked at the heart of David and decided that he has the right kind of heart. So, the question we want to ask ourselves, which we will try to uh, answer through the series on the, on the heart of David is, what did God see in the heart of David? What kind of person was David? How did David interact with people? Well, in fact, one of the answers will begin to show up here because after this incident, Saul became crazy, began to lose his mind. And this was happening to him. Occasionally, he would behave very badly because and he was, people said he was possessed by an evil spirit. So his servants recommended to him and said, look, let us find somebody that will play the heart to you so that every time you you get into one of these um, uh, things that happen to you, he will play the heart to suit your mind and make you feel better. So Saul agreed and said, okay, find somebody. And that's when one of his attendants, one of his attendants said that he knows a son of Jesse. And he's a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and he's a fine looking man. And then the most important, he said, the Lord is with him. The significance of this statement, you know, you will, you will understand it if you ask, how does another human being know that God is with another human being? How does that? How did that? How did this attendant of Saul? What did he see in David that made him conclude that the Lord was with David? And this is what part of what we are going to learn about David, that, that there is a way he made people feel there is something in his, in his relationship with people, his interactions with people, that made them feel that there was something special about him. They made, he made people feel the hand of God in him. He made people feel that what he was doing was of God. 
So this pers this uh, source attendant recommended David. Yes, David was a harp player and they needed somebody to play the harp. But the way he described David's characteristics gives us a glimpse to the nature of this young man called David at the time. Of course, they invited David, uh, went and talked to his father. He was still a young person and because he was young, they had to talk to his father to release him. Um, um, you know, uh, he, his father agreed, released him, and eventually saw, made him an armor bearer. Let us read about this in First uh, Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 to 23. First Samuel chapter 16. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes upon you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well, and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem, who, who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor-bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come, over to, would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. So David had been invited to join Saul's service, primarily as a harp player, as somebody to to help him regain his mind each time he was about to lose his mind. Saul became very happy with David. He did this so well, Saul became very happy with him and sent word to his father. This will give you an idea of how young David was at the time, that they still had to get permission from his father for him to do whatever they wanted him to do. So Saul wanted him to stay long, to, to continue in his service. And he had to send word to Jesse and say, you know, I like this young man that came to my house from yours. Could you let him stay longer? And uh, he made David one of his armor bearers so that that woman called that his um, second job or something. His primary assignment was to play that. Well, um, this kind of concludes our brief study tonight. A brief, what we have really done is first of all ask ourselves why did, I mean, God rejected Saul because Saul had turned away from God. And what actually did Saul do that led God to say that Saul had turned away from him? So that is like learning the part. And we, we saw that the main thing there was that was arrogance, forgetting who the master was, forgetting who sent him, forgetting who he represented. Then we'll, we'll see a, a, the, the contrasting case where God has chosen somebody because he likes the, the type of human being that that person is. He has chosen David. We have to mention him by name now, we know. God chose David because he said that David has the right heart. That men look at outward appearance, but he, God, looks at the heart, which means he had looked at the heart of David and determined that it was the right heart. And we want to learn from this. We want to use this to learn what, 
what kind of person what are the characteristics that pleased God about David? Because that will help us in our relationship with other human beings. The way we are going to learn this is if all of this will be organized and will be learned under a Bible study series that we call the Heart of David. Because we are studying to understand why God said that David had the right heart. We are going to study the life of David in as much detail as we can from the Bible. We will focus on his interactions with people and his interactions with God to try to get a window to his character. Because we want to learn. We want to learn what is good about him so that we can emulate it. The question we will be asked, trying to answer is, what did God see? In the heart of David. So that concludes our Bible study for tonight. Uh, we welcome those that will join us on uh, our, in our study of the heart of David and hope that we can all learn something that will help us uh, improve our interactions with fellow human beings and our interactions with God. We hope that in this series, we will learn something that will make a positive impact on the life of everybody that joins us in this series. And most of all, we hope that what we learn in this series will bring us closer to God's purpose for our life. Thank you, and God bless you.